Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and I want to talk to you a little bit about confidence intervals for the mean when we don't have the population standard deviation. So there are a lot of instances when the value of the population standard deviation or sigma is just not known. And what we know is that when the value of sigma is not known, then we're going to estimate it and we're going to estimate it using S, the sample standard deviation. So when we knew the population standard deviation, we were able to find these standard values of Z alpha divided by 2 that were associated with the various levels of confidence. However, when S is used, in other words, we are going to estimate population standard deviation using the sample standard deviation, we cannot use standard normal distribution and Z values. So instead of our Z value, what we're going to use is we're going to use what we refer to as a T value, or in the case of a confidence interval, a T alpha divided by 2. And where we're going to get those values are from the student T distribution, most often just referred to as a T distribution. It's very similar to standard normal distribution, but has a couple of key differences. So the T distribution is similar to normal distribution in that it's generally bell-shaped. Um, it is symmetrical, so we have a curve that is going to look very similar to our normal distribution table. In other words, it's going to be symmetrical about the mean, where we have 50% of the data above the mean and 50% below the mean. We also know that the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same and are located at the center of the distribution. And again, it's this asymptotic curve that runs out into positive and negative infinity but never touches the horizontal axis. There are a couple of key differences with the T distribution and the Z distribution. The key difference is the T distribution is actually a family of curves based on this concept of degrees of freedom, which is directly related to sample size. So if we looked at this family of curves, what we would see is that in an N of, say, 2, you would have this incredibly flat curve. And then at N of 10, you would get a little bit more normal. And at an N of 20, a little bit more normal. And by the time we get to an N of 30, we'd be looking very normal. And at an N of 50, we'd be looking very tall and very thin. And so because of this, what we know is that the area in these tails is not going to be the same for every one of these curves. And for that reason, our values of T alpha divided by 2 are going to have to be looked up in a T distribution table based on two things our level of confidence, or our value of alpha, and our sample size of n. So when we said that our t distribution was directly related to sample size, it is also based on the concept of what we refer to as degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is simply n minus 1. In other words, it's the number of variables in our formula that can vary. And in this case, for confidence intervals, it will be n minus 1. So if I have an n equal to 20, then I'll have degrees of freedom equal to 19. So if my n was 25, degrees of freedom would be equal to 24. And so what we end up doing is we end up, remember, looking at our alpha. So let's say our alpha was 0.05 and we had this n of 20. What we would end up looking up is a t of 0.025. Remember we split our alpha, um, our tail, into the two sides of the interval with 19 degrees of freedom. In this case, if we had an alpha, say, of 0.10, and we had this n of 25, 
we would look up a t of 0 0.05 with 24 degrees of freedom. And it's this relationship between the shape of the t distribution curve and sample size that requires us to look up our value of t alpha divided by 2 um, for every different curve that we have. One of the things we do know is remember that even though as sample size increases the t distribution remember is going to become much closer to our standard normal distribution in terms of shape. The fact of the matter is when we do not have the population standard deviation we cannot use normal distribution in z-scores. Instead we're going to use our t distribution for a confidence interval. We're going to take our alpha divide it by 2 and then we're going to look it up at n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And this will allow us to accurately identify the areas in the tail and find these critical values that will help us when we go to construct our confidence interval. I know this was brief, but as always I hope that it was helpful and thanks for watching.